Welcome to this webinar where we will discuss nursing care of a child with a nasogastric tube. Please take a few moments now to review this disclaimer. The objectives for this webinar are as follows. We will review the different types of NG tubes used in children, talk about the specific nursing care of a child who has an NG tube, review the common problems that arise and some troubleshooting strategies, and discuss the considerations that have to be made before sending a child home with an NG tube. Most children with NG tubes typically use it to deliver nutrition and or medications when they are unable to tolerate them by mouth, or they may be used to top up oral feeds. In the hospital and community, you may encounter two types of NG tubes, depending on the material they are made out of. PVC tubes are stiffer and radio-opaque, and they can be used for drainage, gastric decompression, or feeding purposes. Due to the plastic material they are made of, these tubes must be changed every three days, and so are considered for shorter-term use. Silastic tubes are softer with a flexible material and are changed every 30 days, therefore they are considered for longer-term use. Silastic tubes may include a guide wire to help with insertion of a new tube. The weighted tip of these tubes are also radio-opaque to help with confirmation of placement via x-ray. Silastic NGs are activated to become slippery when in contact with water, which may help with insertion. It is good to know what types of tubes your organization uses so that you may become familiar with what's available and how often the tube needs to be changed. When inserting an NG for feeding purposes, choose the smallest French size possible to prevent swallowing difficulties or complete blockage of the nair. A smaller tube will also decrease the possibility of reflux episodes. Ensure that all necessary supplies are close by in order to secure the tube and verify placement upon insertion. You will need tape, syringes, pH strips, lubricant, and a marker. When measuring how deep to insert an NG tube, please ensure that the infant is lying in a position face up with their chin slightly raised. For an older child, you may measure the length while they are sitting up and facing forward. Note that there may be a weight at the tip of the NG tube. When measuring, measure from the exit hole and not the tip of the weight. Measure by holding the hole at the nostril, measuring to the base of the earlobe on the same side, then midpoint between the base of the chest bone and the belly button. Mark your measurement with a marker. Children may try to drink water through a straw if allowed to help advance the tube. Infants can suck on a soother for the same purpose. Check that the guide wire is loose and easy to remove before starting your insertion. Apply a water-based lubricant to the tip of your NG tube. Insert the tube and advance it slightly down and towards the ear on that side. Do not force the tube if you feel resistance. When you have reached the marked, marked measurement, the person assisting you should hold the tube in place at the nair while you remove the guide wire. Save the guide wire in a safe place for future use. Secure the tube to the cheek with tape. If the child begins to choke, cough, have difficulty speaking, or show any signs of respiratory distress, an accidental placement into the trachea may have occurred. Remove the tube immediately and allow the child to rest and recover before you try again. In order to verify that the NG tube is in the stomach, the pH of gastric aspirate should be tested. This is done after placing a new tube, before every feed or medication administration, or any time you are concerned that the tube may have been dislodged. 
You should also check placement with pH if the child is choking, vomiting, coughing, or having trouble breathing. This may also indicate the need to remove the tube. Oscillating for a pop noise alone is not a reliable method to verify NG placement. Parents should be taught to check pH at home to verify placement as well. An x-ray may also be used in case of doubt, but the number of x-rays should be limited as long as placement can be confirmed by pH. Use a 5 to 10 mL syringe to apply gentle suction and withdraw stomach contents. You may want to first flush with 2 mL of air to clear the tube. Take a look at the aspirate that you have obtained. Note the color and consistency. Test the fluid using pH strips and compare the color with the label on the container. pH should be less than 6 if it is in the stomach, except for a few exceptions that we will discuss. If you are unable to obtain gastric aspirate, you might try repositioning the child to their left side and wait. This may move the tip of the tube into a position in the stomach that has fluid. You might also instill 10 mL of air in an attempt to move the tip of the tube. If safe to do so, you could also feed the child by mouth and wait for digestion to occur. If you obtain a pH that is greater than 6, consider a few reasons that might impact the gastric acidity, such as acid suppressing medications like omeprazole, recent oral intake or continuous feeds that might mean you're aspirating undigested milk. You can examine the appearance of normal gastric contents to help you make a decision. These are pictures of different colored gastric aspirates. They can give us clues to what stage of digestion we are observing. You might see anything from undigested milk to brown blunted mucus. In hospital, an x-ray may sometimes be a good decision to verify the placement, but if in doubt, take it out and remeasure and then reinsert. The tape used to secure an NG tube can cause irritation and skin reactions on some children. Even the prolonged pressure of the NG against the nair can cause skin breakdown. It is important to assess skin integrity and replace the tapes as needed. Change the tape at least every 48 hours or when they are soiled. Using duoderm under the other tapes may prevent skin irritation. If possible, it's a good idea to alternate nairs with each NG tube change. Always consider patency of the nares if the patient has nasal secretions, especially in infants who are obligate nose breathers. Use tip suctioning as needed. NG tubes ought to be changed according to the type of tube. At SickKids, PVC tubes are changed every three days and silastic tubes are changed monthly. Flushing is important to prevent the tube from becoming blocked. Generally, we flush with five to 10 mils of water after a feed or medications. This volume might vary depending on the child's needs. For example, an infant who is fluid restricted based on their medical condition might be limited to a two or three mil flush. If continuous feeds are running, the NG should be flushed at least every eight hours. Consider the position of a child during their NG feed. Many children do not tolerate lying flat due to reflux and need to be positioned at least at a 30 degree angle. Excessive activity during feeding can also cause vomiting. Patients may require increased monitoring or direct observation during NG feeding if there is a risk of vomiting, reflux, dislodgement, etc., and they're unable to call for help. Consider especially infants and children with developmental delays. Another important consideration is the length of the external tubing and its risk of entanglement or strangulation for young babies and children. Coiling and securing the extra tubing in between feeds can help to minimize these risks. While a child is being fed, we should not forget their need for oral stimulation. An occupational therapist can provide suggestions to ensure that oral aversions don't develop. We should also be mindful that eating is usually a social activity and children who are tube fed should not miss the opportunity to participate in family meal times. Encourage families to sit their children at the table or in a high chair with others during their tube feeding. When an NG tube becomes blocked, try using a one mil syringe with warm water. The smaller the syringe, the higher the pressure will be. Use a pulsating push-pull motion, inserting as much water as possible into the tube. If you are successful, follow with a five mil flush of warm water. If the tube cannot be unblocked, it will need to be removed. 
Of course, try first to prevent a blocked tube. Make sure the tube is always flush and that crushed meds are well dissolved and mixed with enough water. Some medications are not formulated for use with enteral tubes, such as enteric coated tablets or modified release tablets. Examples of other problematic medications include ciprofloxacin suspension and certain laxatives, which often block enteral tubes. A child might be given bolus or continuous feeds through an NG tube, depending on their tolerance of higher volumes and rates. An NG feed may be given via gravity bag, with a pump, or by syringe. Gravity can only be used with bolus feeds, as the exact rate cannot be maintained. A feeding pump is the only way to ensure a precise rate. Check your organization's policies on cleaning and reusing feeding bags and syringes. At SickKids, feeding bags are rinsed with sterile water between feeds and changed daily. At home, family caregivers are taught to change feeding bags one to two times per week and wash with soap and water between each feed. Certain types of formulas are able to hang at room temperature for up to four hours, while others are much shorter. Be sure to check the maximum hang time for the formula that you are using. Let's do a case study. You are caring for Ruhan, a three-month-old with trisomy 21 and a complex cardiac history. He relies on NG tube for top-ups of formula, as he tires quickly with oral feeding. He is not on any medications. You're setting up his NG feed, and you are unable to aspirate from his NG tube to check the placement because nothing's coming out of the tube. What would your next steps be? First of all, do not use the tube without verifying the placement. You could see if he will take more formula orally and then try to obtain aspirate again. You might try also repositioning him. Sometimes instilling air into the tube will move the tip and allow you to get some aspirate back. Continuing with Ruhan's case, mom gives Ruhan 20 mils of formula safely by mouth. You attempt to aspirate from the tube again and easily withdraw two mils of aspirate that look like fresh formula. You check the aspirate and get a pH reading of 7.5. What might you consider? Think about what the aspirate looks like. Could it be the formula he just took by mouth? Undigested formula may have a higher pH. Consider using the NG tube for his top up, but monitor closely for signs that he is not tolerating the feed or any sign that the tube is not in the right place. Each organization will have discharge criteria for a child going home with an NG tube. There are a number of important factors to consider. Is the child ready from a medical standpoint? Are they clinically stable? Are their feeds and medications well tolerated? Is the family ready? Consider acceptance as well as training. Is there an established and well tolerated feeding schedule? Are there any home care supports in place? Will they qualify for home care nursing? Will there be any follow-up after discharge? Who will change that first tube if it's dislodged or due for a routine change? Family caregivers will need opportunities to practice in addition to theoretical education. If teaching them NG insertion, consider planning an NG tube change before discharge so the caregivers can do it themselves. Finally, ensure that they are well equipped for home feeding. Do they need a feeding pump? Do they know where to purchase their supplies? Are there any funding resources that they can access? Practices at home may vary from the hospital. As mentioned earlier, the mode of feed delivery may be shifted from a pump to gravity if the patient is taking bolus feeds and can tolerate the rate. This is preferred for home feeding to, due to ease of administration and cost. Bags are changed one to two times per week at home. Consider the type of water used for flushing. Sterile water is recommended for children less than four months of age. Tap, well, bottled, or distilled water can be used for children greater than four months. Safety considerations mentioned earlier should be emphasized to families, including the level of observation needed during feeding, positioning, and strategies to reduce the risk of dislodgement, entanglement, and strangulation. When planning for equipment and supplies, remember that the cost is usually out of pocket for most families. Availability of pumps for rent or to purchase may depend on the region the child lives in. 
referrals should be made to home and community care support services. The referral will not guarantee that the services are available and the support will likely be short term. For this reason, it is essential that families are well trained and prepared to independently care for their child with an NG tube. That brings us to the end of this webinar. Thank you for your participation.